Well, hello, my lovelies. It's Janet Perez with The Painted Saguaro, and today I'm gonna show you how to take this piece of furniture and create this beauty from it. So we are gonna get started first by creating some really cool um, molds with the new Capital Craft Resin from Paint Couture. This two-part resin is incredible, you guys. It is... Um, <laughs> It's revolutionary, really. You pour it just like you do most two-part resins. You pour the part step one and step two into your cups. You mix them together into your mixing cup. And um, it takes very little stirring, really, to mix them up. And then what you do is you pour it into your mold just like this. It doesn't take a lot of stirring at all. Pours very nicely. Very, it's The viscosity of it is a lot, I want to say thinner, so it pours much easier. And you'll see here in a second when I move the cup out of the way, I didn't get it all the way down there, but it's very easy to manipulate it into the little blank spots. And then um, literally you let it sit for 10 minutes or less and it is set and ready to go. And look at how like pliable it is. It's like almost like rubber. It is um, just incredible. And it will harden over time, like maybe an hour later, it will get stiff. But if you need to um, use it later, all you need to do is warm it up with a heat gun or a hair dryer, and it becomes pliable again. So all of those pieces that you end up having to pour with your over mix, <laughs> they're not wasted, you know, that you can only use on a flat surface anymore because now you can warm them up and put them on a bendy surface, which I think is huge. So here I've made myself a Harlequin diamond. And um, if you've never made a Harlequin, it's basically twice the height of the width. So this one, I believe I made it four inches wide by eight inches tall. And I'm tracing it on to my uh, drawer fronts the top two drawer fronts um, with a piece of chalk. And you can see those horizontal lines there. What I did was I drew where the center of my drawer lines were so that I made sure that my um, Harlequins were lined up perfectly. And I always start in the very center of the drawer so that I'm working from the center out so that they're not you know, I don't have like a half of a Harlequin hanging off the edge of the drawer, if that makes sense. So now I've grabbed my duck egg blue and I am just using a small artist brush and I'm staying oh so carefully inside the lines because, you know, Janet is just so good at staying inside lines. Um, <laughs> I was one of those kids that could never color inside the lines. How about you? Anyway, um, so yes, the... Uh, small artist brush helps you stay in control and um, get better coverage. But look at the, when we're talking about coverage here, you guys, look at the coverage of this paint. I mean, literally one coat coverage, that's pretty darn phenomenal. And you'll see these drawers, they have no sheen on them. I did scuff sand them down. Um, this dresser was in really sorry shape when I picked it up. It was filthy dirty. And um, it had like a, a resiny shellac finish on it that was kind of crusty. So yeah, I sanded it pretty good um, to get that off. But um, so here I'm just painting the top section of each of those Harlequins on the top half of the drawer and um, making sure that I get into all of those little seams there because you don't want to have any gaps once you take those drawers apart. 
And uh, then we were going to tape the lines off because this will help get me really concise, clean lines. Now there's two ways that you can make sure that your lines are really clean. You can brush straight down like I'm doing here with my paintbrush so that you're sure not to push paint up under the tape. Or you can use your clear top coat and just run a fine thin line along the seam of your tape to make sure that you're sealing that seam so that no paint can seep up underneath it. So I'm just gonna finish painting this um, mystic gray color along uh, the taped edges here so that I've got a nice, like I said, a nice crisp clean line. And then I'm going to retape the top portion and do that as well. And then we're moving on to the side. Now, I apologize here, guys. I have recently got new internet in my home, and I didn't realize that my studio was not getting internet coverage. So I did not know that I was not recording um, doing the raised stencil on this piece here. I used the embossing medium, and this stencil is called Forest by Stencil Revolution, and I bought it on Amazon. It's a wall stencil, but it is a really great stencil. And I'm using Pitch Black, which is our chalk style paint, which has amazing coverage, and it is probably the truest black I've ever used on any paint. Um, one coat coverage, it's just beautiful. And um, I'm going to let this coat completely and thoroughly dry. So I'm gonna go on to uh, my next step after I finish this coat of black. Which is adding some shadow effect to these Harlequin by using our liquid pigment in iron oxide to just kind of give a little shadow effect to these Harlequin. So I'm using one part of the liquid pigment to one part water and literally it's barely dipping the tip of your paintbrush into the liquid oxide, iron oxide, and then diluting it with a little tiny bit of water. And as you can see, I'm just kind of brushing it along the edges on the left side of this Harlequin and then dabbing it back with a dry rag um, until I get the effect I want, sort of a shadowy effect. It just gives a little bit of you know 3D depth and dimension to these so that they don't look quite so clean and new. All right, so here what I'm doing, I've mixed basil with some yellow perfect pigment, liquid pigment, and gave me this really beautiful sort of bright lime green. I have mixed some of our coral color with our rose pink to get this sort of peachy color. And then I'm using the duck egg blue. And I'm just randomly painting these colors onto the side of this dresser. I'm keeping them wet and I'm spraying them down pretty heavily with vinegar water. And this is one part vinegar, one part water. So 50-50 water vinegar mix. And then I'm using a frottage method to blot it back off. So I'm keeping it really wet. I'm blotting it with these uh, shop towel, paper towels. And then I'm using the same um, chip brushes that I use to lay the paint down on the side to sort of spread that paint back on. I'm not adding more paint, but I'm just kind of spreading that paint that's already on the side back into the crevices and the recesses of the side to make sure that the black isn't showing still because what I want here is a real thin veil of that paint on the side of this uh, dresser. I don't want the black showing at all, but I want um, to make sure that that color is very almost transparent or translucent. And you'll see why in just a second. So I'm just gonna keep working this and keep frottaging it or blotting it and keep spreading that color that is super wet and keeping it wet because you wanna make sure that paint doesn't dry on you. Um, and it doesn't matter if you blend them together a bit because that actually just kinda of adds to the magic of it. You don't want it too blocky looking. Um, you want it to kinda of all meld together at some point. 
it just sort of enhances the whole look of it. And I've got fresh paper towels here. And again, um, just working it until I get it where I want it. So you can see that green is lifting a lot easier than the pink and the blue. But the green is what will end up showing up the most at the end, which is kind of ironic, but that's cool. So see how translucent the paint is, but you, when I'm done, you won't see the black at all. See right there. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So now I'm grabbing a sanding block and I'm wrapping it in a baby wipe and I am wiping that down. It's still wet and I'm using the sanding block so that it just stays on the raised portion of the stencil. And I love this effect. So you can see the pink and the green and the blue and all those colors. And you can see that raised stencil and you can see those little woodland creatures. And I just, I think this is just the coolest effect ever. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I'm very happy with it myself. It's one of the cutest stencils I've ever seen, quite honestly. I've been holding on to it for several months, waiting for the right piece for it. So now, as you can see here, I painted the front of this piece. And again, my studio wasn't getting cell reception, or excuse me, internet reception, so it didn't record it. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to paint a flower on the front of my dresser, because I was going to stencil a piece on here. And because this didn't record, I thought, well, heck, I guess I can't really show that because the blend, I have no proof that I did a blend. So I went online and I found a flower that I really liked. And it was done by Ginger Cook. Ginger Cook is a great artist. Um, if you've never done a freestyle or a one of a kind, I don't know what you would call it, but your own artwork on a piece of furniture, I highly recommend that you try it just because it's challenging. It's something different. It takes you out of your wheelhouse. It stretches your creativity. Um, you know, here I'm blending all different kinds of colors using the paint couture colors. So for example, those colors on the top um, are eggplant and Tuscan sun and angelic blended together. The blue is midnight blue with some angelic mixed into it. Um, I use some barn door red. I use some um, rose pink. I used some of our uh, pink pigment powders. I used, um, oh my gosh, I used probably every color that I have. I used opulent green. Um, I don't even have all the colors in front of me right now. I'll have to list them out when I post this um, this piece, but there I used firelight, which is a, a bright orange. I used so many different colors, you guys. It, it's it's phenomenal. I use some of our neon colors just to kind of get the effect that I wanted on this piece. And it was really fun to create. And it took me outside of my comfort zone. It really did. So if you ever just kind of get into a slump of um, not feeling challenged I highly recommend that you go onto YouTube, you find something that you think you might want to try to put onto a piece of furniture and just go for it. And when you do that, I would love it if you would share it on our Paint Couture page um, or share it with me. Again, I'm the Painted Saguaro. It's Painted Saguaro Art and Decor on Facebook. Um, and shout it from the rooftops because I think being creative like that, that's why we do what we do here is to express our creativity. So I'm not going to show you the whole process of creating this flower because there's already a YouTube video on how to create it. That's not my goal here. My goal here is to get you to step outside of your comfort zone and do something different and try something new. 
And um, hopefully you'll do that and you'll share it with us because to me, that's what it's all about. So with all the colors that I used on this piece and all of the time I spent on this piece, hopefully you think it was worth watching. I think it turned out okay. Lots of pigment powders, lots of different colors of paint, and there it is. I also used our Lux Metallic Gold to draw out the details on the front feet of this piece as well as the uh, resin mold that I did on the bottom trim. So that's it guys. Thanks for joining me again. This is Janet Perez, the Painted Saguaro, and we will see you.